Right, so now I am going to create the arm binding to go on our, uh, our bralette. So I've cut my two binding strips, my strap bindings. And then I, so on this one I've marked my placement marks from the pattern. Um, and then I've cut my elastic length as well. So the elastic will get inserted between those two placement marks. So as you can see, it doesn't quite match. So the idea is that you stretch the elastic just a tiny bit um, and the end result will give you a very slight gather. And what that will do is stop the straps from being all warped um, basically when it's finished, when it stretches out and gets top stitched, that'll flatten out. So um, I've done this one side. So the thing that you need to remember when you're doing your uh, straps here is to make sure that you mirror it. So I don't want to attach the elastic to the top because that would make it identical to this one. I want to put the elastic on the bottom of this one, which will then mirror um, the other one. So I will clip that between my placement marks. And then just move over to the sewing machine to zigzag that. Okay, so we want a long wide zigzag. And then position the elastic and the binding under the foot. And then before I start stitching, I just hand wind a couple of stitches. started so once I know that that's secure in the fabric then I stretch it out and add another pin or clip in the middle and then very slowly start stitching that so you want the elastic or the binding sorry just showing just a tiny bit underneath the elastic you get to halfway start stretching again Got a little bit of a skip stitch there, but um, I'm not worried about that, it's all going to be hidden. Okay, so that's my two straps. So now I'm going to move um, over to the. I generally do this on the sewing machine, but I'll do it on the overlocker so it's a little bit faster. Um, so I'm just going to stitch along here um, to create my strap. So my longer edge is the one that aligns with the back. So we'll find our back piece. So when we're um, positioning this, we just want the elastic to just overlap that binding a little bit. And then the same with the front. It's going to just overlap the binding a little bit. So 
So the same thing as the neck, we're just gonna stretch that binding a little bit to match the garment. And then same with the back. And the back's quite a big opening, so you may wanna add another clip before you start. Okay, so this is how we're looking. Got the binding attached and we will start stitching that. So what I actually like to do is start stitching this on the sewing machine around here. Um, and that just ensures that this doesn't move uh, while we're attaching it as well and just keeps the placement nice. And that'll make sure you get a nice even horizontal back um, as well if you're making sure that that elastic doesn't move from where it should be. Just make sure that elastic stays just over the binding a little bit. Now we've got our strap attached to the main part. So what I usually tend to do here, and you absolutely don't have to, is I would typically overlock over the top of that as well. And the main reason I do that is to just give me a really nice um, even seam allowance in case I've gone a little bit wonky on the sewing machine when I've done my zigzag, um, so that when I'm wrapping it, I still get a really nice even binding if I'm wrapping it neatly around the seam allowance um, but we'll just go with my zigzag on this occasion and hope for the best so again exactly the same as the neckline we're wrapping that around the seam allowance And then we actually want to keep doing exactly the same thing where the strap is. So on this occasion, we're wrapping it nice and neatly around the elastic. So I've cut this strap at seven eighths of an inch, but if you have done it at one inch, you'll get a little bit of excess fabric um, coming around your binding that you'll need to trim at the end. But um, the seven eighth gives you a really nice um, neat finish without having to trim. So we're going to go ahead and top stitch that now. So I try and avoid starting right on the seam. I either start just before or just after the seam. Under the arm.
just trim those threads. Just bring it over here. So this is how we're looking now. And that is, that's how it looks when it's finished.